Greetings friends and once again, I'm glad of your company. Over the past 10 months or so, I've spent quite a few weeks in the Psalms and I'm going to continue with that today. The Psalms are found in the middle of the Bible and they are part of what is often referred to as the books of poetry. They are beautifully written, but I also find them very practical and they strike a deep chord with so many people. They bring comfort at times of trouble and anxiety. They bring hope when the world is crumbling around us. And they point towards the one who is our refuge and strength. Today I'm looking at Psalm 127 and also Psalm 128. They are both short passages, but well worth a closer look. They read, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the, the fruit of the labour of your hands. You shall be blessed and it shall be well with you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Friends, those are very powerful verses. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is thought by many scholars now that, that Solomon may have been the writer of this psalm. And if so, now he's not speaking against hard work by any means. Nor is he against making plans and thinking ahead. And also, the city would always be in need of a watchman. We all have our jobs to do and we should work to the best of our ability. God has given to each of us gifts and talents and abilities. He has given us a mind to imagine and dream and create. And planning for the future is a sensible thing to do, otherwise we would get nowhere. But the psalm causes us to reflect on the question, where is God in our plans? Do we include God in our plans? Or even more to the point, is God the centre of our plans? Or do we leave him out? In Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, we read of a rich farmer. This was a man who was ambitious, hardworking, prosperous. Someone who was good at planning ahead. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. And yet the Bible calls this man a fool. Why do you think does the Bible call this man a fool? I believe it was because he was obviously so busy planning for the future. He had no time to think about God. He had no time to think about his soul or eternity. That didn't seem to come into his reckoning. And so everything came to an abrupt and tragic end. I think that's what Solomon was talking about whenever he wrote, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Last week I was in Carrickfergus and I had pictures of the castle. But today I'm thinking of another castle. You might recognise it as Edinburgh Castle. It is pitched on a lofty crag overlooking Scotland's beautiful and historic capital. I love Edinburgh. I've been there on many occasions. The last time was in 2017. But it was not until this week that I discovered the motto of the city. The words engraved on the crest and the coat of arms. Missa de Minas Frustra. This is of course Latin. Now at school I excelled at Latin, believe it or not. 
And I can tell you that the translation reads, without the Lord, all is in vain. It comes from the first words of Psalm 127. Nisa de Minas Frustra. This quite literally means, without the Lord, frustration. That has been the motto of the city since 1732, and it still remains to this day. It appears not only on the city's crest, but it is also stamped on the city's official documents. Without the Lord, frustration. Could this not also be stamped on the lives of all who are trying to live their lives without the presence of Almighty God? That is a good question. Let us ponder it over, and in the meantime, here are a few more pictures I took in Edinburgh. Nessa de Minas Frustra. Without the Lord, frustration. Without the Lord, all is in vain. Should we not adopt that as our motto too? A wise person will always seek God's blessing on everything. This was of vital importance to the children of Israel. From their experience, they knew it as long as God was with them, they prospered. But whenever they became rebellious, and left the Lord God Jehovah out of their lives and began to follow other gods, things just started to fall apart. God had great plans for them as a nation, plans to prosper them and give them hope and a future. They needed God's presence and when they neglected that, there were consequences to face and things went badly wrong. In the psalm, the, the word house, that may refer to an ordinary dwelling. It may refer to the temple as a place of worship. Or to a family with reference to its success and prosperity, as the word house is often used now. Either way, the statement is universal. It's designed to indicate a universal dependence on God our dependence on him in all our undertakings because although we may enjoy a degree of prosperity and success if we don't seek God's blessing we lose out God's blessing and God's peace in our hearts it is the greatest thing we can possibly possess I love verse 2 of the psalm where it says he gives to his beloved sleep it's such a beautiful verse because it speaks of God's peace. The peace that passeth all understanding. Who is God's beloved? I think that question is answered in the following Psalm. Psalm 128. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat of the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed and it shall be well with you. You know, friends, God has a purpose for our lives. We are not in this world by chance. God created us and he has a purpose for us. When we invite the Lord Jesus into our lives and confess our sins to him and seek to follow him, then we have fulfilled that purpose and he will give us his peace. He will give us hope and the assurance of a home in heaven. And we will know the meaning of the verse he gives to his beloved sleep. And it shall be well with you. Friends, enjoy some more views from the local marina in Carrick. And some more of the castle, along with the music. And I'll see you next week. Bye.
Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the peace which passeth all understanding and for the everlasting arms of love which surround us, which keep us and which lift us up, for the fellowship of and the joy of being your child and for the promise he gives to his beloved sleep. We remember how you promised the children of Israel that if they walk in your ways, it shall be well with them. Lord, help us to walk in your ways and follow you and do your will, being a friend to those in need, a comfort to those who are anxious and an arm to lift up the fallen. Forgive our sins. Forgive our pride and our self-reliance, remembering that unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.